This is the NT Mini Noir, and it is probably the most expensive NES you'll ever see. Clocking in at a hefty $500, the NT Mini Noir is a technical marvel with the ability to play physical NES and Famicom cartridges in HD quality with a vast array of optional visual tweaks. But when you can pick up an original NES console for less than a fifth of the asking price of the NT Mini, is it worth the expense? My name's John from Biddy Kong's Quest, and when I first started this video, that is the question that I was looking to answer. However, the more that I looked into this situation and the more that I looked into the NT Mini Noir itself, the more I realized that the story of the NT Mini Noir is actually the story of the company that created it, Analog. In order to really understand the NT Mini Noir, a console that has incredible high points, but also some significant flaws, we need to understand Analog, the company that made it. And we also need to look at the history of their relationship with the retro gaming community. It's been a long road to get here with a lot of ups and downs along the way. And there's a lot to cover, so here we go. Founded nine years ago in 2011 by a guy named Christopher Tabor, Analog specializes in the creation of extremely high-end, modern solutions for playing retro video games while adhering as closely as possible to the gameplay experience generated by the original console. Their first system, the CMVS, was a rehoused Neo Geo MVS console with upgraded aftermarket video connections and, most impressively, an outer shell that was made out of wood. And this is a pretty cool solution because at the time, options for playing MVS carts were in fairly short supply. This is in contrast to the modern day because now there are a lot of options that are available to anybody that might want a consoleized MVS. Anyway, they followed this up in 2014 with the Analog Neo, which was actually another consoleized MVS, but this time with joystick controls built in. While admittedly impressive, this was only the beginning of what Analog was capable of and they would get the opportunity to prove that with their next release, the Analog NT. The first of Analog's consoles to be designed specifically to play NES games, the Analog NT is unique among consoles even today because it was designed to use the actual original CPU and PPU chips from an original NES, surrounding those chips with completely re-engineered hardware to process the original signal and output it at the absolute highest quality and with perfect fidelity. In an interview with Polygon, Chris Tabor summed up his mission with the Analog NT pretty well. There are over 2,000 games for the NES, Famicom, and Famicom Disk System. I want everyone to be able to explore them all with no emulation. We created the Analog NT to experience this pivotal part of gaming history with the quality and justice it deserves. Now, speaking of visual quality, the Analog NT shipped with the ability to output analog signals such as S-Video, Composite, Component, and RGB out of the box, with the option of 1080p output, with an optional $79 internal mod. Now, reviewers absolutely loved it, and if you could get your hands on one, it was the way to play NES games in 2015. The key phrase there being, if you could get your hands on one. See, the problem with offering a premium, limited product is that it's, well, limited. And even from the beginning, getting your hands on an analog product required a watchful eye on their website and fast fingers whenever something went on sale. And that's a trend that continues even today. And it's an undeniable fact that with this scarcity of product, which some people believe to be artificially created to generate demand, has left a bad taste in many people's mouths when it comes to the company. One group of people, though, that is totally okay with this is scalpers. As analog products frequently sell for hundreds of dollars over the MSRP on auction sites like eBay. And speaking of systems that cost way too much money, for the 30th anniversary of Zelda, Analog released a 24 karat gold-plated version of their Analog NT console. 
It's pretty cool, but also incredibly expensive due to the fact that only a few were ever made. Now, after the Analog NT, Analog would go back to refine the design and release the NT Mini in 2016, the first console that they ever made that would utilize FPGA technology. These are computer chips that allow designers to recreate the electronic architecture of original consoles digitally, programming them to act exactly like the original hardware would have. In Analog's case, this resulted in a more refined system that allowed for more options than ever before in terms of resolutions and outputs and different ways to process the video signal while still remaining true to the original NES experience. And just like the Analog NT before it, the NT Mini received rave reviews from the gaming press, but it still wasn't without its faults. One of the big ones, and we'll come back to this later, was the cartridge slot, which didn't really secure cartridges as well as it should have, and would cause crashes and just general glitchiness during play. Still, the NT Mini achieved somewhat legendary status, regularly fetching anywhere between $750 to $2,000 on eBay in the years following its initial run. Now, after the NT Mini, Analog would move on to the 16-bit era, with the release of the Super NT and Mega SG systems, which provided modern solutions for Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis, respectively. And despite constant pleas from fans to do another run of the NT Mini, it seemed like Analog had moved on from the 8-bit era. That is, until January 20th, 2020. When someone named Michael Marchand started a Change.org petition to get Analog to produce one last run of the NT Mini. And when I heard about this petition from a fellow speedrunner named The Cove over on Discord, I immediately went over and signed. And then, over a month later, on February 28th, Michael posted this message. We did it. Today, Analog has opened pre-orders for one final run of the NT Mini console. There are limited quantities available, so go place your order now. And later that morning, I did. After years of refusing to pay scalpers on eBay, I would finally have my very own NT Mini. Dubbed the NT Mini Noir and retailing for $499, the same price as the original NT Mini, this system was basically sold as just a palette swap of the old system with a different color outer shell, but that was enough and it would ship by the end of July. Ecstatic retro gamers couldn't wait to get their hands on one. And then, on March 6th, Analog posted this message. That's right. After just a week on the market, the final run of the NT Mini console was gone. And while that may not seem like it's a long time, it's important to keep in mind here that analog products usually sell out within hours or even minutes, not days, so that pre-order window was actually longer than most. Still, apart from a very limited amount of pre-orders that would be offered later in the summer, the opportunity to get an NT Mini from analog themselves had seemingly passed for the last time. All that was left to do was wait. Months passed, and Analog remained radio silent on the progress of the console. Spring turned into summer, and people were starting to get a little nervous about that July ship date. Then, on July 3rd at 11 a.m., Analog tweeted an update. NT Mini Noir ship date has been delayed and will ship in November 2020 due to the current state of global affairs and sudden supply chain challenges. For any questions about your order or to cancel for a full refund, you can do so at any time at our website. Now this was certainly disappointing, but it was pretty understandable considering what was going on in the world at the time. But Analog wasn't done yet. Two minutes later, they posted another tweet. NT Mini Noir is much more than we initially announced. In fact, it's a completely redesigned NT Mini from the inside out. Some of NT Mini Noir's new features. So not only would Noir owners be getting their NT Mini, it would be a vast improvement over the older but still incredibly high quality original version. Now it definitely sucked to have to wait a few more months to get our NT Mini Noirs, but all in all, most customers weren't really that upset because we were getting an upgraded console at the end of the day. It's worth mentioning though that not everyone was happy with Analog's announcements. Specifically, people that already owned the original NT Mini and had missed out on the pre-order window because they already had one. 
Since none of these new features were announced during the pre-order window, original NT Mini owners felt they had been cheated out of an opportunity to own what was in their minds a superior product. And I can definitely sympathize with them, because if our roles were reversed, I imagine I'd be pretty upset too. But then again, that is the cost of being an early adopter for a product. Sometimes you give up on better features that are made during revisions later on down the line so that you can have early access to a console or to a piece of technology before anybody else does. This even happens with mainstream systems like the Nintendo Switch, which came out with an updated model with better battery life last year. It's a tough situation no matter how you look at it. So how did Analog respond? Well. They said nothing. Instead, they spent the next few weeks posting animated GIFs of NES and Famicom games, simultaneously building hype for the noir, which you could no longer buy, while unintentionally taunting those who missed out on the opportunity to purchase the upgraded system. It didn't help that not even a month later, on July 27th, the company announced the Analog Pocket, a handheld FPGA solution that I mentioned before, whose own pre-order situation carried plenty of drama. So to put it in perspective, here's Analog, a company that is already overdue on their pre-orders for the NT Mini Noir, who has now just announced another extremely ambitious project and put that up for pre-order before even satisfying the people that ordered the NT Mini. It's pretty easy to see why people would have a bad taste in their mouths when it comes to the company, because they do all of this without really having any hint of a conversational tone with their audience. In terms of the NT Mini Noir, the July update would be the last word that customers would hear from Analog for quite a while. Months passed, and all that was left to do was wait. The consoles had shipped. And four days later, my console arrived. Was it worth the wait? Now, whatever your opinion on Analog as a company, it's really hard to argue with the fact that the NT Mini is a gorgeous piece of machinery. The whole case is made from one solid block of aluminum. The Noir Edition features a clear bottom panel, which gives you a clear view of the bottom of the main PCB. The four controller ports on the front side are made from clear plastic, allowing the light from embedded LEDs to shine through. Now, it's important to note here that while the controller ports work well enough, I did find the fit to be very loose when using an original NES controller. I could definitely see someone accidentally pulling out the controller during an intense gaming session. On the back of the shell, the console offers an HDMI output, a DB15 port that can support RGB, component, S-video, or composite analog signals, stereo audio jacks, a headphone jack, a Famicom expansion port for using a Famicom disk system, and a USB Type-A port for charging accessories like the included 8-bit Do wireless controller. The top of the console features two cartridge slots, one for the Famicom and one for the NES. The NES top loader, Famicom, SNES, and N64 all feature a similar design, and for the most part, it works here too. I should mention though that there's a pretty excessive amount of wiggle when the carts are inserted, a problem that didn't exist on those other consoles because the cartridge slots were a bit tighter. Now I did a video solely dedicated to this issue back when I first got the console, so you can go watch that if you want. But in my extremely unscientific tests in that video, I did determine that while annoying, it's probably not a huge deal and it's very unlikely to affect gameplay in most of the games that you would actually play on the console. That said, a few games like Dragon Warrior feature very short pins on the edge of their cartridges which can make the connection a bit finicky. Still, you'd have to bump the console pretty hard in order to cause a glitch or a crash, so while annoying, it's definitely not a deal breaker. Now, all that said, the Analog NT Mini Noir has some flaws, for sure, but overall, I'm pretty confident that it's a really well-built piece of machinery and that it's also going to last me for a long time. The NT Mini puts out lag-free digital and analog signals featuring incredibly sharp pixels that look great on every screen I tested it on. 
and I was not disappointed. I tried it on everything from my little CRT to my 55 inch 4K TV, and it looked great on all of them. But to be honest, anything worth doing is worth overdoing. So I also threw it up on a 30 foot movie theater screen as well. And after all of that, I'm pleased to report that the NT Mini, in terms of visual fidelity anyway, performed very, very well. Now one thing I did notice is that the color palette didn't quite match what I'm used to seeing coming out of my RGB modded NES, especially in the yellows and oranges, but fortunately there are options in the menu to adjust color values to tweak the settings to your liking. Now, every NES outputs slightly different video signals depending on the components that were used to build the thing as well as their age. Mine, for instance, has these really interesting diagonal line patterns in certain patches of solid colors. It's not a glitch and it's not a defect, it's just something that has to do with the picture processing unit that they used when they built the console. The NT Mini's output, by comparison, produces an absolutely perfect signal with no imperfections, and you may or may not like the stock look of it. It's a good thing then that Analog provided plenty of options to change the look and feel of the image, including several filters that smooth out edges, change how pixels are scaled, and even add scan lines. Even though the aesthetic is a little bit different than it would be on a CRT with original hardware, chances are you'll be able to find something that looks great to you on any digital display. Now, while I think it's important to point out that I don't actually have any of the tools that allow me to test lag and response time between the controller and the TV uh, in a scientific manner, to me it seems like that lag time is really virtually zero, even with a lot of these tweaks and filters and additions added on to the image. I mean, I could run the Calyx Gamer Second Adventure on this thing and execute frame perfect timings about as well as I could on my original console, so that's good enough for me. But that's enough about video signals, because audio signals have also received the royal treatment when it comes to the NT Mini Noir. Not only do you have two separate audio outputs with both RCA jacks and a headphone port, but you're able to tweak the signal in different audio channels in some incredible ways. I, for instance, used it to make Gemini Man's stage theme sound a bit more alien. It does take place on the moon, after all. All these audio tweaks are a really cool feature that wasn't necessary, but it is very much appreciated. Of course, the system supports all of the special sound chips used in different NES and Famicom games, including the expansion audio used by the Famicom Disk System games, as long as you actually have the Famicom Disk System attachment itself plugged into the back of the console. Now, it is worth noting that I tried Famicom Disk System games directly from my EverDrive N8, and they wouldn't work, though I hear this issue has been addressed somewhat in the newer EverDrive N8 Pro. Honestly, I have been blown away by the possibilities, and I'm really looking forward to revisiting a lot of the games in my library just to try everything out. Now, before we start talking about compatibility with different games, it's important to note that no aftermarket console is going to have 100% compatibility with every game on the market, and the NT Mini Noir is no exception to that rule. Now, it's great that they designed a system with off-kilter games from companies like Codemasters and Tengen in mind, even infamously temperamental games like The Immortal seem to work flawlessly. Still, it's important to remember that nothing is ever a completely perfect replica of the original. In the Tengen version of Fantasy Zone, for example, I did notice some weird graphical jumping on the title screen that's not present on an original NES console, but otherwise the game was perfectly playable. On another note, some modern homebrews seem to be a little hit or miss. Commenter Tantaroba noted on my last video that Micro Mages especially seems to have some problems in 4 player mode, but I was unable to reproduce it by playing the ROM on my EverDrive. 
That said, it is entirely possible that the physical version of the game would cause issues, because some of those PCBs are built with modern techniques that aren't necessarily compatible with every system out there. Also, for those interested in using an EverDrive with your NT Mini, I did notice some weird static on the menu screen with mine. Once I booted into a game, it went away, but I would definitely be lying if I said it didn't make me a little nervous about exactly what electrical signals were passing through my EverDrive at the time. That said, just about every game I tried that was released during the NES's original lifespan in the 80s and 90s played mostly without any issues. There was one weird little glitch in Little Nemo where the sprite colors got swapped briefly, but this was the only time I experienced anything like this and I was never able to recreate it. Now, I tested about 40 games with my NT Mini Noir while making this video. Most of them were licensed NES games or the unlicensed ones like Tengen ones and that sort of thing from the NES's actual life cycle. But I did test a bunch of homebrews and hacks and things like that as well. And I can say with relative certainty that the NT Mini Noir is going to be able to handle almost anything that you would throw at it. Though you should expect a few little glitches and things with some of the more obscure hacks if you decide to play those. And that about covers it for the options that the NT Mini ships with. But we're not done yet, because we still have to talk about one of the coolest things about the NT Mini Noir, the jailbroken firmware. Now, I won't go into how to jailbreak the system here. There are very easy to follow instructions over on Smoke Monster's GitHub page. I'll put a link in the description below if you wanna check it out. But as far as added functionality goes, there are two main areas that I'd like to cover. The first of these is the ability to load alternate FPGA cores from other 8-bit consoles, like the Sega Master System, Game Gear, Game Boy, and Game Boy Color, and even obscure systems like the Mega Duck. And just like playing NES games on the NT Mini, these cores, in theory anyway, offer play experience with perfect fidelity to the original, including any glitches or sprite issues, just as if you were playing that game on its original hardware. Playing through an authentic experience of Monster World 4 on the Sega Master System without having to pay $200 for a physical copy? Yes, please. But as cool as it is to be able to play games from other systems on the NT Mini, I'm actually just as excited for the second thing that the jailbreak adds to the console. Copy NES. This is a built-in utility that allows users to make ROM dumps from their own cartridge library. As somebody with over 300 NES cartridges, I appreciate this feature immensely, as it allows me to create digital backups of all of my games, many of which still hold the same save information I used when I was a kid. Copy NES lets me not only back up these games, but the save files as well, preserving the digital snapshot of my childhood experiences before the internal cartridge battery dies and renders them lost forever. This is something that I've also already done for my Super Nintendo, Genesis, Game Boy, and N64 collections using a device called the Retro 2. And it's nice to be able to add my NES and Famicom collection to the list of games that I've backed up digitally. So now that we've covered all of the features of the NT Mini Noir, where does that leave us? There's no doubt in my mind that it is an absolutely fantastic device, but is it enough to justify the asking price of $499? One of the most common criticisms I hear about the NT Mini is that you can just invest in a Mr. FPGA device instead and have many of the console's features, including the different console cores and the 1080p output, available to you for half the price. So if that's the case, who is the NT Mini Noir for? Well, to answer that, I think you have to look at Analog, the company. You see, from the very beginning, it's been Analog's mission and purpose to not only display retro games at the highest possible quality, but also to recreate the experience of playing physical games on those retro consoles. See, the appeal of an Analog product is literally in their name. The term analog means a physical device where you can actually touch the parts that make it do whatever it is that it does, versus a digital device which just reads a data stream of ones and zeros, which then tell the device to display something on a screen or maybe move a part over here. But it's the digital ones and zeros that actually give that instruction. 
Analog, as a company, specializes in providing physical experiences, like popping a cartridge into a slot, that interface with our modern digital world in a seamless way that allows us to enjoy the best of both worlds. Of course, a reliance on physical technology poses its own series of unique challenges. Anyone who is around for the NES's glory days in the 80s and 90s will remember blowing in the bottom of their cartridges to get them to work. But that's all part of the experience. There is absolutely nothing wrong with getting a Mr. FPGA and going the all digital route for enjoying your retro gaming library. But if you're somebody who enjoys pulling a game off of a shelf, popping it into a slot, and that physical experience is integral to the way that you specifically enjoy retro video games, then you are who the NT Mini Noir was made for. Now I know that I fall into that category, and if you do too, then this console might just be the optimal way for you to enjoy the NES's fantastic library. At the time of this video's release, you can still pick up an NT Mini Noir on eBay for about $600, which is only about $50 more than I paid once you consider the shipping costs for the console. If you think you might be somebody who would enjoy the NT Mini Noir, this might be the best chance you'll have to grab one before the price jumps up again. In the interest of being thorough, I do feel like I have to mention that there is one more FPGA solution for playing physical NES cartridges that I'm aware of, and that's the Retro USB AVS. Now, that system is a little bit different from the Analog Mini NT, and the biggest difference might be the price. It's only $185, and it does allow you to play both NES and Famicom cartridges, and it also supports the Famicom Disk System attachment. But the shell is made out of plastic, so you don't get that premium feel from handling the NT Mini Noir, and also, there's no way to jailbreak its firmware to load other cores and play games from other consoles. It's an absolutely great solution if that's what you're in the market for, but it is stripped back a little bit compared to the NT Mini, and they really are for two different subsets of the market. Now, like I said, when I started this video, it was really just supposed to be a review of the NT Mini Noir and what it was capable of. But the further I got into it, the more I realized that to truly understand the NT Mini Noir, you have to understand the story of its creators and where they've come from. This video was a little bit more in-depth than a lot of the content that I usually do. A lot of my stuff is usually pickup videos and shorter content, but I do in-depth videos like this from time to time whenever I find a topic that really interests me. So if you liked it, then make sure you leave a comment down below and tell me what you thought, and I'll try to make more of these in the future. They do take much longer than my normal videos, um, but again, I do really enjoy doing them. So if you liked it, like, comment, subscribe, do all that YouTube stuff. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you next time.